Hi, this is Zachary and Elizabeth, and thanks for tuning in to Simply Enough. If you're liking our podcast, we'd love it if you'd share with your friends and family. And then rate and review to raise our visibility and spread the message of enoughness. We love you. And remember, you are simply enough. Just as you are. Period. Welcome to Simply Enough, where we celebrate you. Because you are enough just as you are period there is strength in not being strong it's not only okay it's natural it's human and it connects all of us i am blessed with good people in my life too and i think that there have been opportunities missed where they wanted to give to me and i put myself up on that tower trick me into believing that i needed to be strong and strong meant everything's fine everything's okay i think we all carry this weight of being strong all the time Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Simply Enough. You're adorable. I am Mr. Zachary Linners. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ignacio, giggling again, because this is everybody take, what, five in starting <laughs> the episode, because I tried to uh, be strong and uh, step out of my comfort zone and uh, start the episode. And for the life of me, I just, <laughs> everybody, I just freaking can't um so this is like take five <laughs> makes me laugh so much because you actually do a beautiful job but i think now it's just one of you know it's just one of those things of like nope i'm not going to do it you do it so and then who knows where, where we go from there but i don't know anyway <laughs> you are well, gonna you are gonna you are gonna take us or lead us on our journey today so i'm gonna have to punt it back to you so yes and so i will um and i'm happy to do so um <laughs> the last episode started off right with a yep. confession by me in terms of um the tearful breakdown that i had yeah. the episode prior um because of my feeling weak and less than mm -hmm. and um I reflected on my confession and, and, you know, how unfair to me and to our, our listeners and our viewers to even call it a confession as if mm -hmm. it's like some big deal that I had a, a tearful breakdown of feeling less than and not enough. I mean, that's the whole point of this podcast. <laughs> so of course I did. And of course everybody does, but it is just so revealing of um, sometimes the pressure we put on ourselves um, uh, especially those of us that are recovering perfectionists, which again, as we've talked about, you know, perfectionism is, is not anything at all to be proud of. Right, it's, right. it's a tool that we use that's actually self-harming, but the pressure that we put on ourselves to be strong mm -hmm. and, and even, you know, to clarify again, which we have in the past, you know, we are certainly not about toxic positivity where, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, uh, the, the gas cage is not empty, you know, just put a happy face sticker on it. So it's not right. about toxic positivity and it's honestly not about being strong all the time. And there is just such an added pressure if we feel that we have to be strong all the time. And just like, um, last week, uh, Disney helped us out in terms <laughs> of, you know, coming up with, you know, thought ideas and stories. I have to bring another one up again, if I may. Thank you, Disney. Um, I am um, a member of a very large Facebook group mm -hmm. of uh, women physicians um, and specifically uh, mom physicians. Shout out to Physician Moms Group. Love you all. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And what was just so meaningful and so striking and clearly resonated with so many was how many of us physician moms, um, uh, you know, because we are moms, we have uh, kids that watch Disney, were commenting on this movie Encanto. <laughs> and in Encanto, there is a character that many of the moms claim to be almost, you know, their avatar and oh. a particular song um, that this uh, character sings. And so the character is Luisa and Luisa uh, is an older sister in the family and each family member is, is bestowed mystically with gifts and Luisa is bestowed with the gift of strength. And 
not only does she have to be strong for herself, but she's strong for her family and she's actually strong for her entire village and community. And she sings this song, forgive me if I, if I'm wrong about the name, I think it's simply pressure. Um, does that sound right? Um, but anyway, it's, it's, it's all about how she's trying to keep this, um, stiff upper lip and that's her mm -hmm. role and that's her identity is to be strong for everybody and she's literally physically strong mm -hmm. and that's her 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 mystical gift but in doing so she also has to be emotionally and mentally strong mm -hmm. for everybody and she can't show a crack and she can't mm -hmm. show weakness in mm -hmm. in any way um but the pressure that uh that she feels that that drip 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 mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. pressure that she feels um uh, in many ways is is causing cracks and mm -hmm. and breaking her but she feels that she can't show that and the fact that that resonated with so many um uh fellow physician moms in this group and and I, I say physician moms mostly because that's that's the group but i have right. no doubt that you the non-physicians and the non-moms mm -hmm. uh, feel this way. I think we all carry this weight of being mm -hmm. strong all the mm -hmm. time. And that brings me to another movie. <laughs> we talked about, we, we, we confessed <laughs> this, I think in the <laughs> first episode, how, you know, as much as you and I are academicians, we get a lot out of pop culture. We as do. Well. And so, yes, I'm going to reference another movie, um, which is called the Adam project out on mm -hmm. Netflix. And um I won't digress and, and tell the whole story. It's a great movie, by the way, everybody watch it. But there's uh, one moment that I actually jotted down um, and quoted um, because um, a, a mom is uh, kind of trying to um, lovingly make excuses for her son's behavior uh, because uh, her husband, the son's father, passed away. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the son is grieving and acting mm -hmm. out and, and the mom is at wit's end, but also so loving and, and apologetic, uh, um, for her son, knowing that her son is grieving. And she says that she, you know, she says, well, you know, he's grieving. And the person that she's talking to says, well, aren't you grieving too? And she, she almost couldn't speak. And then the person she's speaking to, and I'm not going to give the whole story away, but the person she's speaking to, who's an adult, lost his father oh, okay. uh, as a child and recognized that his mom, you know, acted strong for him. And this now adult son is telling this grieving mom, you know, aren't you grieving too? You know, the problem is, is that when you act as if and pretend that you're strong and you have it all together, people believe it. Mm -hmm. And that's a disservice really to everybody, yourself and to those who are presuming that you're strong when you feel that you can't show weakness. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, when you are usually the strong person or the go-to person mm -hmm. or the person that has the right things to say and, 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 you know, can pull others up, that doesn't mean that they're not having moments of weakness themselves and, and need other people and, and need to feel space and grace to feel vulnerable because again, we've said this in past episodes, you know, just because you can lift something or just because you can carry something doesn't mean it's not heavy. Right. And it's, it's, it's perfectly normal um, and allowed to mm -hmm. not feel strong all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I was a school leader during the pandemic. I believe in the work that our teachers do, but I also believe that school leaders uh, have a tremendously difficult job. It's just not culturally uh, popular to praise our leaders, our school leaders. Um, and it can be rather isolating. What, As you were talking, I, I kept thinking about parents and, and the role that parents have when their children are looking up to them and they, they you know, they've got to make sure that they're, they're fed and they're clothed and that they've, they've got 
um, an education and, 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 you know, they, they have the things in life that they need a house and, and just how tremendously difficult it is for parents um, to also remain uh, confident in their direction going forward for their children, because their children are looking up to them. And, and there is, I think that that responsibility, I almost said burden, but you know, that responsibility to, to provide that source of, of um, confidence and strength and also peace for children. Cause they do need that from their, from, from their parents. And I'm not a parent. So I, my connection to what you're saying is that l- school leaders have a, a little bit of that same expectation when their teachers are looking at them or their parents are looking at them or students are looking th- at them to um, assure them that there's a direction and there's a vision and that there are deliverables and that if there are concerns that they're going to be listened to and, and the role is so incredibly complex and then you throw a freaking pandemic in there, right? And it just flips the script. And as a school leader myself during the pandemic, I really struggled with exactly what you're talking about, which was I need to make it look like everything's fine because if I make it look like everybody everything's fine, those people are going to feel, my teachers, students, parents are going to feel better. They're going to, it's going to help them deal with the fact that it's not fine, right? And yet it came at a cost and it came at a cost of my own acknowledgement of I'm not fine either, right? Because I, I put on this mask and this shield of like, I'm strong and it's okay and we're going to be fine. And we can will ourselves through this. And yet I'm undoing just some of um, the, the residual effects of not opening up to people or, or finding those people that I could feel safe to say, I need help. I really, I really need help. So as you were talking about, I just thought the role of school leaders, um, and I'm, you know, I'm giving a shout out to all the school leaders that listen, like you have, you have a tough job. You do. People are looking at you in the same way that kids are looking at their parents and, and the eyes on you to be that reassurance um, I think can somehow, at least I'll, I'll speak for myself, can somehow trick me into believing that I needed to be strong and strong meant everything's fine. Everything's okay. Rather than maybe I need to reframe what my thinking about strength is. Anyway, so that's, that's one direction I, I wanted to just jump on based on what you were saying. Just What's the other thing that you wanted to say? Well, I have three lovely siblings, wonderful siblings. And uh, I'm going to talk about my sister for a second who, uh, is somebody who in, inspires me a lot and somebody that I lean on in times when I need somebody to listen to or help me or when I'm feeling like I just need to pick me up or, um, but you know, there haven't been too many opportunities where I've, I feel like I've gotten to do that for my sister. Last year, her husband was dealing with some very big medical issues. I, when reaching out to her, I said, says, can I, can I help? Can I do anything? What, what you know, please, like, this is going to be hard. You're going to have to get the kids to school and He's gonna he's gonna be in the hospital for a couple of days, and then he's gonna be home, and and you're gonna have to manage and juggle all of that. So p- please, like, what I I want to help you so that you can help him, right? Like, so that you can be there for him. And she finally said, finally, like I put this expectation on her, but she said to me, um, "Would you come out and and take care of the kids while I'm at the hospital? Like, would you come and just?" watch them, get them to school, make sure they're doing their homework, maybe take them out to lunch and just be with them for a couple of days. And I, that moment was so big for me because I saw my sister's strength in a completely different light. Now Mm -hmm. I saw her strength as somebody who else I just believe is incredibly um, intelligent, articulate, funny, engaging. She's a great mom. She's a, a great wife. She's a great sister. She's all these wonderful things. And now she's able to say, Hey, can, can you help me? And there was such strength in that moment. Absolutely. And she felt like it was a moment of weakness and we got to talk about it where we got to say, no, actually, I feel like you showed me the opposite. So school leaders and just my own experience as somebody who was trying really hard in, in how I was defining strength to will myself and get through it. And, and then Yet I had a very different experience where I got to support somebody in what they would consider a moment of weakness. And I actually saw it as a moment of strength. Well, how did you, if you can clarify a little bit more, do you want to delve deeper into how you saw it as a moment of strength? Which I agree it was. What did you say? The vulnerability with which she said, I can't do it all. And I need help. I need you. And not only 
do I need you? But I know that if I ask, you will hear me and then do what you can to support. It's, it's like when we, when we see um, people cry, you know, some, sometimes the assumption is that like crying is a sign of weakness when the, the, the bravery and the vulnerability of, of being able to express yourself honestly in that moment, that was what my sister was able to do. And also a moment of, she kind of, without even knowing it, put me a little bit in check on the way that I was thinking about myself and what strength meant for me and helped me see like, oh, maybe I needed to think about it this a different way. And even the, you know, in previous episodes, we often talk about like, and what is the meaning that we put on yeah. things, right? The meaning that we put on, like I said, using the word confession as if it's, yeah. you know, something terrible that I, you know, actually had a moment of, of sadness and feeling less than, or even naming it as, you know, being brave and courageous to be vulnerable, which it is. Yeah. And, but that's because contextually we mm -hmm. have placed meaning of crying or asking for help as weakness. Right. So contextually, because of the context of making that weak, then yes, yeah, something that, that is natural and, and universal with all of us is now made to be a, a, a moment of bravery and courage for being vulnerable mm -hmm. when truly vulnerability and, and the things that we're vulnerable about is actually very universal amongst yeah. everyone. Yeah. So absolutely what a moment of strength and, and courage for your sister to reach out and ask for help. Mm -hmm. And may I say for all of us, to give each other space and grace and recognize we all are vulnerable. And that's actually what makes us human and comprises humanity. And there's so much similarities amongst us more than what differentiates us. And if we can just keep coming back to that, then wouldn't it be wonderful to be in a community, in a society where being vulnerable and being um, and recognizing the need to ask for help um, no longer is a step of courage and a step of bravery, but right. really is a reflection of love and empathy mm -hmm. and, and community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can, can you talk a little bit more about the moms in the group and, and their connection with Louisa? <laughs> I mean, I had to take a deep breath because this is, um, it's just, it hits me at the core. Uh -huh. So only speaking from my experience. So in no way am I saying that yep. my experience is, is, is better um, or a, an epitome of a reflection of, of, of uh, anything. I'm just going to speak from my experience, which is, so as a female physician, and so this isn't even, you know, orthopedic surgeon women, it's, it's women physicians. There's still this element of uh, and again, physician moms, but again, you don't have to be a physician and you don't have to ha be a mom <laughs> to have these feelings. The whole right. point is that this is universal. That's the whole right. point of the podcast is, you know, we share so many universal things, but yes, contextually speaking from this group as physician moms, number one, uh, the majority of us had to strive, 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 achieve, achieve, achieve in order to become a physician. And then on top of that, we are uh, also wearing the hat of a mom. And uh, so we have, you know, that hat or that role to carry. And if um, we are a partner to somebody else in raising this child, then, uh, or these children of ours, then that's also another mm -hmm. role. And if one is a single working yeah. parent, that's quadruple the role as mm -hmm. it is. So this feeling of providing and, and the pressure mm -hmm. to, to uh, be a pillar of strength, whether it's for ourselves, our colleagues, our peers, our patients, our children, our partner, our spouse, uh, you know, um, this pressure that is placed on us and that we place on ourselves very much uh, identifies with Louisa and Louisa, yes, being gifted with strength. And therefore, you know, that saying of 
you know, you are so blessed so as to be blessings to others, but you can take it to a, to a different level where it's actually caustic and wounding mm -hmm. to oneself. It's amazing just how that resonates uh, for so many. And especially as physicians, where part of the definition of our very job career vocation is to be a provider mm -hmm. and to to uh, be a proponent of health care and thus mm -hmm. care for mm -hmm. others who are we to ask for anything mm -hmm. our role by definition is to provide so even that in asking for help or acknowledging that we need help that's not the norm mm -hmm. so to see it captured in a animated character in a Disney film with Lin-Manuel Miranda's beautiful, poignant lyrics really hit home for a lot of women in this group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is where uh, social media can, can we can see the benefits of social media, that there is a group that exists for you guys, like-minded people, not only to, to be in support of each other, but also then to to be in community as you process through things together, right? So for some person, for I don't know whoever it was that initiated that conversation, but to even to take that step out in somewhat of a public way and, and risk whatever the reaction might be, that whoever did that, that alone to just initiate and drive the conversation, um, that small step is, is huge in potentially changing our societal expectations of, of, of how we carry our strength I think of somebody like Simone Biles, for example, who the, under the pressure of the Olympics, like had the wherewithal to say, no, I don't want to, I don't want to risk really hurting myself and doing damage under all of this pressure. I don't know if I would have made the same decision and who knows what would have happened to me, you know, if I had tried to push through uh, what the, what the effects would have been. So in this case, I just, I'm grateful <laughs> for those people that do take the step out. And also grateful that for, for you, there are opportunities for communities so that you can support each other. I don't think school leaders in general have that. And I, I worry for many of my friends who are school leaders because there isn't really the opportunity. There aren't the easy opportunities or avenues for them to find comfort in people who have shared experiences uh, to process through what, what it is they're dealing with and maybe reframe their thinking about strength and and, and what they have to hold on to and the pressure that they're under and, and just what it, what it means to be a school leader during a pandemic or, or not during a pandemic. I just live in that gratitude that, that you physician moms have that group. And I live in gratitude that there, there are similar groups for other people and also live in gratitude for somebody like my sister who was comfortable enough to just step into a relationship with me and say, hey, can you do this? And I look forward to the opportunity where I can do that to her and show her that I, I need her and, and that's okay. It's more than okay. It's natural. Yeah. That's the thing is it's, it's not even about accepting it or, or affirming it or validating it or even celebrating yeah. it. Yeah. It's more, it would be wonderful to get to a place of it's natural and it's human mm -hmm. for us and for our listeners and our viewers, you know, a couple of things. One, I'll speak for myself. So much of that pressure uh, and that persona of being strong is self-inflicted and self-perpetuated. And so I take ownership of, of my needing and feeling to always seem like I have it together and that I have to confess is the word as I use, you know, when I cry or when I feel less than or when I feel not enough. It's, it's natural, you know, recognize it. Um, recognize that moment, recognize that feeling. And then in recognizing the feeling, then it actually, you know, diminishes the weight of it. And that's how one goes through it and, and, and past it. For our listeners and viewers who feel that you always have to have it all together and that you always have to be strong for others. It's not always, it, it might be often, you might be that person that, yeah, it's, it's more often than not that you are that person, but it is absolutely okay. It's absolutely natural and it's absolutely human to, to have feelings and sensations and events of weakness and allow yourself that self-compassion of, of space and grace. 
And then in recognizing that and recognizing this is human, so no big deal, then reach out to others like your sister did and ask because it is no big deal to ask. It, 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 let's bring it to a place of it no longer being brave and courageous to ask for help. So do that for yourself. And then for our listeners and viewers and, and, and a lesson for myself, how do we show up for that? And sometimes it is showing up for your friend, um, your, your partner, your child um, by doing something for them like you did for your sister. And sometimes it's just showing up. Yeah. What I mean by that is, is uh, one of my dear besties, she, um, there was a time when I wasn't, I was feeling really down about myself, you know, kind of worried about my place in my career as, you know, um, women orthopedic surgeon, you know, solo uh, private practice um, compared to big, large, strong alpha male orthopedic groups in town and that kind of stuff. But I can articulate now what was bothering me, but I'll tell you at the time, I just wasn't really feeling myself. And I had reached out to my friend. I said, hey, let's get together for lunch or dinner. And we kind of kept um, um, sometimes, uh, cause she's a, a strong women business owner too, hooray. Um, sometimes coordinating schedules is like herding cats. Like we just can't get it together. <laughs> And, but, and finally we were able to choose a date and sat down and, you know, just, you know, um, uh, hanging out. And I said, you know, thank you so much for, for making the time. I know it was really hard and, you know, I just wanted to hang out. And she said very perceptively, she said, I don't know. I just sense that you just needed to get together. And I, at the time, didn't even know that I anything was bothering me. I just kind of knew that I was in this kind of uh, meh feeling. I now know what that was about in terms of my insecurity and self-doubt about um, my, my, my business, my, my practice. Um, but she just sensed and she wasn't there to fix anything and she doesn't, wasn't there to cheer me up and make me feel better. She was just like, I don't know. I just sensed that, you know, you needed someone to, to talk to. And so, yeah, I made the time. And I, I, that was years ago. And I, and, you know, we've been besties for longer than that. And there's been wonderful, um, wonderful get togethers and talks and everything since then. But that was a seminal moment as a lesson to me of really just showing up sometimes not having to cheer up like toxic positivity not fixing things but just showing up for those moments of vulnerability is is so healing and empowering in and of itself without any other action than that and in contrast just uh, not long ago, I had lunch with another dear, dear friend of mine who's like a sister. And in my saying, you know, how, uh, where I was feeling relative to work and, and personal things and my, my own sense of, of self and self-worth and self-value and all this kind of stuff. She was so visibly uncomfortable, like literally visibly uncomfortable. Like she started fidgeting and was just so quick to cheer me up. Mm -hmm. And I know her intent was fantastic and, and well-meaning and so out of love, but in her quickness to get out of that discomfort and thus her quickness to try to uh, fix it and, and cheer me up. It was actually dismissive mm. of where I was mm -hmm. and what I was feeling. And that was not her intent. So I'm not calling her dismissive. I'm just right. calling the, the reaction yeah. to it um, actually ended up being dismissive and hurt more mm -hmm. because I was already feeling not seen and not heard and not mm -hmm. valued. So then in articulating that, and then instead to be like, oh, but all is well. And, but, you know, right. this is going well and that is going well, almost felt even more so not heard and not valued. And again, this is coming from a, a, a person and a place of, of love who does value me, but, but almost that inability to sit in that, that discomfort um, 
as if, no, we're all about being strong and we're going to champion the strong and only the strong. And when you're not strong, then it's not worth it. And so don't, don't sit in any less strongness. Actually, in and of itself, that was that caused some pain and hurt. Yeah, I can say because you are a, a near and dear one to me, there have been moments, I don't know if it's because of that moment, but you have then taken it. And when I've been in a place of just dealing with something and, and, and struggling through something, you have actually said, okay, what do you need right now? And just even that question, right, is it lets me know when you, you are being there for me and you're also letting me like drive it. Like, do I just need to vent or, or do I, do I want to just be sad for the, for that moment? Do I just want to live in this place or do I need a reframing or a rethinking like you? I don't know if it was that experience or, or an, before, but now who you are, you approach your friends with that sensitivity to my friend is in need of something. I don't want to make an assumption about what that is. So I'm going to let them tell me what it is. You do that. You do that. And you've inspired me to do that. And I think that for our listeners today, that could be one of your takeaways is when you are actively listening to somebody in whatever place that they are, take a cue from Dr. Ignacio and just say, how, how can I show up for you today? What, what, what do you need? Because that feeling of being dismissed on top of whatever it is you're feeling of the, that the compounding, that that's, that's a layer upon layer that really is, is, is hurtful. Really and then ironically, also, if I can just add on top of that, then dependent on one's personality, then the self guilt, yeah. so <laughs> yes. my own guilt of, of not being cheered up by yep. the person or not, not, uh, feeling better and, and even recognizing, you know, um, well, this person is well-intended, yeah. which she was. She was. So right. then that makes me feel guilty. Right. It's, it's just self-compounding. Yeah. And so sometimes it's just really, as a prior in a prior episode that we talked about, it's okay and be comfortable with it's okay. Mm -hmm. be, and be, com be comfortable with it's okay. It's for the moment. It's for now. It's not always about being strong. and. It's, it's not about never feeling vulnerable. Yeah. It, it, you know, I, you, you talked about educators and I'm going to talk from a parenting standpoint as well. You know, oftentimes we um, talk to our children or talk to our students about um, role models mm -hmm. and those who have achieved and those who, who have success. And sometimes I feel like, when we ironically, and that's wonderful to have goals and to have vision and to have drive and to have motivation and to have ambition. Those are all not dirty words and they are not excluded from the vocabulary, not at all. But again, what we talk about on this podcast is, is contextualizing. And in context, yes, it took a lot of strength and perseverance and resilience to get over and get through these things to these, these places of achievement and success. But can we also honestly recognize the vulnerabilities of those successful people and, and how those moments were real? And yes, they had the resilience and the perseverance to get through them. And those are lessons to be, to be learned. But there's also lesson in just the mere fact that they weren't born successful. Right. They had ups and downs. And so we might see them at the top of the mountain, but did we recognize and value that climb up the mountain or peaks and valleys to get to the top of that said mountain, but there were other hills that they had to, to get through. I, I certainly tell my own kids, Gracie and Mikey, I uh, tell them more probably about um, I had hardships with or what went wrong or what less than stellar grades I got in that class versus awards, you know, accomplishments, achievements for them to know that that's all natural and that's normal and that's part of it. And, you know, we started from a young age with a practice of um, thorns and roses. Yep. So, you know, we've talked about practice of gratitude and mm -hmm. how, you know, it's not joy that makes me grateful. It's gratitude that makes mm -hmm. one joyful. Mm -hmm. And so there's the practice of gratitude, 
Well, there's also when they were young and gratitude was a big word. When they were young, at the end of every day, we would have the practice of thorns and roses where they would think of three good things, roses, that happened that day and three thorns that happened that day. Because again, toxic positivity is not helpful. And it was always thorns and roses in that order because we're not going to dismiss and we're not going to deny these three thorns that happened mm-hmm. uh, throughout the day. Yet, despite or, or, or in addition to those thorns, there were always roses that we right. could think of. And so it doesn't dismiss or deny. It just contextualizes that mm-hmm. it's all normal and it's mm-hmm. all a part of one's day and it's all a part of one's life. I think, to be honest, though, I think that uh, my kids are proud of me and um, uh, are are proud of are proud of what I do or what I've accomplished. I think they've um, valued more when I've told them I felt like an outcast in high school mm-hmm. and I never got asked on a date and I didn't have a boyfriend and I didn't ace that class or I had to work damn hard in that class. And I didn't know if I was going to get into medical school. And I definitely didn't know I was going to get into orthopedic surgery. And I didn't know if I was going to make it. And, and, and how, and I I tell them not only in the past, but I tell them real time, because Mm -hmm. in case they think that I've got it all together now, yeah, that, wow, yes, I'm at the top of the mountain. And yes, they can appreciate, you know, the hardships that I had to get through. Oh, no, no it still happens now Mm -hmm. and that's okay. And Mm -hmm. that's a part of life. And not only is it a part of life, but it's actually the vulnerabilities and the, the moments of weakness Mm -hmm. that make me appreciate that much more those moments of strength and success Mm -hmm. for lack of better. I hate that word success, but you know, (laughs) that it's all a part of it. And not only is it all a part of it, but it's actually a part of actually cherishing it and savoring the good that much more. Mm-hmm. Quick, quick little tangent story. So uh, it's, it's a, some teachers will do the roses and thorns activity at the end of the oh. day in their classrooms, mm-hmm. pr- primarily in, in the elementary setting. Um, I haven't heard it in middle school or high school setting, but I, I imagine there probably are teachers that do it. In my classroom, we had done, I don't know where I got it from, but we had done fruits and veggies as opposed to roses and thorns. And then I had this little kid that one day raised their hand and I'm I just, you know, I'll, I'll say it's Eli. So Eli, what's up? Uh, Mr. Leonard, because it was Mr. Leonard then, right? Mr. Leonard, uh, why do you say fruits and veggies? I like my veggies and I don't really like fruit. So why, why are <laughs> fruits the good ones and veggies the bad ones? I'm like, okay, yeah, lesson learned kid. Thank you so much for that. Um, but anyway, so it just made me smile when you said roses and thorns because the just the practice of identifying challenges come and they need to be acknowledged. They they deserve to be acknowledged. They're not vegetables unless they're you know vegetable that you don't like, and then you can you know. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts. I happen to love Brussels sprouts. Um, but the other thing that I was thinking is just the relatability of seeing somebody who maybe had hardships in high school, didn't date. Et cetera, as you, as you've spoken about, and then um, went to college, went to medical school, female orthopedic surgeon, um, has really faced and and achieved, right? Has has broken through a bunch of those hurdles for your children and for me and for our listeners. We we see your, your quote unquote accomplishments, but what makes it truly inspirational, but also inspiring, is hearing the hardships too, because then they're like, okay whatever our path is, we can get there too. And we can face the hardships, not seeing those makes it seem like it's elusive that we don't even know how to get there. Right. Right. And so that, so that the athletes or, or the, you know, the highly quote unquote successful people, and we don't know the stories that come with what they had to go through to get there almost make it feel like they're not human, that we don't even, we have no connection to them. And so this podcast in particular, I think also helps anybody who believes that they have to maintain a level or a standard of success or, or achievement or who they maybe then can say, oh no, it's their humanity and their vulnerability that's actually relatable. And that's where that strength comes through in the way that your kids are mostly draw, are drawn to 
those stories um, because it dimensionalizes you. And it also helps them dimensionalize themselves. And they can say, you know, my mom's my hero or my mom's my quote unquote role model. That's a bad word. Don't believe me. But, <laughs> but then it's not a role model as in it's not achievable. It's a role model as in I, will, I can do my own thing, be my own path, and I will face roadblocks and hardships and challenges. Some my mom got through, some she didn't. I will have my own and that's okay. It's wonderful and it's actually to be celebrated. So Right. It's, it's what are we going to focus on? And yeah. in focusing on it, what piece are we going to use as inspiration? Mm -hmm. Is it in fact the quote end game and the achievement or is it the story? Is it yeah. the journey? And I think in, in, in honestly and vulnerably revealing one's story and one's journey, that is where, as you said, that is where the connection is. And with mm -hmm. that connection, yes, it, be, it, it becomes relatable, like you mm -hmm. said. But yeah, it, it's more the focus of the, the, the story and the journey as opposed to idolizing and putting on a pedestal the achievement. Yeah. And then the assumptions that are made on achievement, yes. Yes. which that's a whole other episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, how you were saying how brave and strong, which it was contextually for your sister to ask for help and that, how that al allowed you to show up for her mm -hmm. and, and be there for her. I just love that because that is so very telling and it's, it's, it's so illustrative of what we all can do, which is when one tends to feel, so for example, me, how, when I used to feel that I always had to be mm -hmm. the giver and the doer and be the strong one and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that was my role, which I now recognize it isn't. And like I said, it's a disservice to me and it's a disservice to others. Yeah, and what yeah. I mean by it being a disservice to others is, is when one takes almost in a martyrdom way, give, 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 mm -hmm. you know, when you are not asking, then you are not receiving. Mm -hmm. When you are not asking, you are depriving others that joy and that dignity and that privilege of gifting themselves mm -hmm. to you. Yep. So as much as we may pride ourselves again in almost a near self-sacrificial martyrdom way, I give and I give and I give and I give. Honestly, actually, it is a gift to learn to receive <laughs> from others and ask for others to let them allow them to give to you because there is joy in giving and in pushing them away and being strong and putting up walls. Oh no, I got it. I got it. Now you're up there in, you know, that tower in the castle with the, with the drawbridge up and the walls up because you're so strong and you're keeping people out and not allowing them to give to you because of not receiving. And by you, I mean I. I'm speaking no, no, from like personal a, experience. This is, yeah. So by you, I mean I. <laughs> I am owning this. That, that's that's my story. That was my lesson that I had to learn in recognizing not only, again, it, not only is it okay to ask for help and to feel vulnerable and not feel, you know, not strong. Not only is that okay, it's natural. And in many ways, it allows others yeah. the joy of gifting themselves to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for those who have gifted themselves to me. I'm so much the better for that relationship and that connection along the journey. And I pray that I have been that for others as well. I'm smiling because we hit these point and these points in the podcast where it feels like that's just where we need to end it. And I yeah. and I, I think that's a perfect way to to end this this podcast or this episode, uh, Dr. Ignacio, because you are- Because we're both about to cry. <laughs> yeah. It, yes, and, yes, and uh, I'm going to work through the, the crying. Um, I would say that it, as you were speaking in it, I'm like, wow, that's me too. Yeah, I needed that reminder today. And then you kind of brought it back to yourself. You said, by you, I mean, I, and I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, but, <laughs> and I think that's going to happen for our listeners too. I, 
I am blessed with good people in my life too. And I think that there have been opportunities missed where they wanted to give to me. And I put myself up on that tower. And I just thank you for that reminder and that reframing. I think we can delve into this a little bit later, but there's also, there's a fear I, I can admit in asking for help and having the other person say no, or, and then how often you ask for help. And if you get no's and no's and no's and no's, maybe you stop asking for help. And I think there's a, that's a whole nother thing that we can unpack later, but for now, just even the opportunity to reframe the opportunity for somebody to say, I, I want to show myself to you and, and give myself to you is my takeaway for today. There's strength in not being strong. <laughs> Say it again for us. There is strength in not being strong. It's not only okay, it's natural, it's human, and it connects all of us. Boom. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.